to the Cover 2 Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Mullet Swami, alongside Bangle, the Bangles fan. And today we have another great, great show. We're going to be discussing the playoffs, what happened last week, what happens this week. We're going to be discussing some of the big moves that happened throughout the league. And we're also going to be discussing a little bit about the national championship game. Bangle, say hi to the people. What do you want to start off with? Start off with... Yes! 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 For those of you who are listening and not watching, Bangle is a lifelong Giants fan, and I bust his balls every single episode and all the time because of his name, and he just put on a Cincinnati Bengals hat to fully embrace the gimmick. So I am I'm very proud of him right now. I'm just a Bengals fan, man. That's who I am. Forget I rough the colors. Don't worry about this blue sweatshirt. I mean, I, I will worry about it just because Bengals don't wear blue. But what is this? I, the brims is kind of odd. It's a new hat. Um, I, I actually have a few of those, except I, I don't like the snapbacks. I have the fitted ones. <clears throat> um, Ooh, sharp. Um. Ow, my eyes. Too sharp. Uh, okay. Um, we're getting into... They call me Al Sharpton. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that's the way you start the show. So how are you guys doing? Um, Bengal, where do you want to start off with? Do you want to start off with the, uh, the future... the national championship in Tua Tagalog. So we're going to be talking about the, uh, the former second round pick of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In uh, Blankenship. Oh, yeah? I mean, that dude hit, what, was that a 56-yard field goal? Ice in his veins. Yeah, Rodrigo Blankenship. Ice in his veins, but not in his eyes. (laughs) Those spectacles, you call them. The rec specs that he has. Oh, boy. Oh, man. It's it's hot fire looking at those specs. but They were uh, amazing. um, I didn't get a chance to watch most of the game. So, please. I'm disappointed in you. I mean, I was busy, but... I was, I was live tweeting a lot of it, so, I mean, you could have followed me over there and checked out exactly what was going on. I, I came out with a ranking of uh, some of the players that were really impressing me. I'm assuming Menko was at the top of your list? You would assume incorrectly. Who was at the top of your list? Um, I gotta tell you. I'm listening. Jake Fromm was at the top of my list. Boy, okay. did he have a great game. Okay. He looked so good. Okay. I'm not even kidding. I'm being okay. dead serious. First off, really good. the best thing that he did was spin the football in his hands on every drop back. That was fantastic. If you didn't see that, he literally is twisting the football like it's a Rubik's Cube as he's dropping back every time. It was fantastic. But, I mean, he that gets... Sharp. He made he's... some really good throws. Um, yeah. That Georgia defense is great, but the Alabama defense, which no one was talking about, is also really good. And every single drive, you got to go up against a Nick Saban... Alabama defense with some of the top players in the country, arguably the best defensive line in the country. Yep. I don't think it is. I think Clemson is the best. I think Alabama's top five defensive line. I mean, I, Interior, I, I yeah. would certainly make an argument. I mean, when you get down to it, whether it be Alabama, whether it be Clemson, you're looking at a large majority of future NFL players, whether it be yes. guys, you know, I mean, Every think about Alabama this. Every Alabama defensive lineman will play in the NFL. Yeah, think about this. Alabama started th- two true freshmen, and their quarterback was a true freshman who won them the game. That's crazy. Like, yeah, uh, Tua Tagovailoa. Yes, Tagovailoa. I think you got it right. I'm, that, that's yeah. actually really impressive. You're you're the name person. I'm the. I pronounce things well generally. I obviously I joked in the beginning, but that destroyed credibility. Yes, uh, I'm not really the joke guy when it comes to. I mean, I, I joke around. Um, you joke, but uh, when you're talking about players, I mean, I'm going to say their name correctly because they deserve that respect. They do, they do. It's funny uh, on the Dan Levitard show. I think it was today, they or yesterday, they had something where uh, everyone they basically said everyone at ESPN was scrambling to pronounce this kid's name. So they said which sounds closer to his real name, what Stephen A. Smith said, or just saying to a ah 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 ah, and and every, and people voted and said that the clear not you know speaking gibberish was closer than what Stephen a smith had 
But I didn't hear what Stephen A. said. It, it was it just it was bad. Like he he completely butchered it. But I mean, I saw the end of it. I thought it was a very interesting game. I saw most of the fourth quarter. Um, Sonny Michelle. Sony, yep. So, Sony Michelle is going to be a very talented NFL player. He is very good. It's honestly, I think you could compare it, and they're not the same players. And we were talking about this earlier. Not a huge fan of comps, yeah. uh, pro comparisons for those who didn't get that sick lingo I just dropped. Um, but it's kind of <laughs> a little. I'm not going to say equivalent, but I think that's a close word to what they have going down in New Orleans with Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara. Not to say that Sony Michelle is Alvin Kamara. But they're similar. I mean, Not he to say that Nick Chubb is Mark Ingram, but they're similar. Yeah, I mean, as a prospect, I think Nick Chubb is going to be. I think he's, people are going to be scared off because of his injury from a few years ago, which could drop him a little bit. But that's a guy who has first round talent written all over him. I don't agree with that. I wouldn't take him in the first. No, I don't know if I'd take him in the first because he's a running back, and I wouldn't say that he's transcendent. But I think that he has first round talent based on maybe past precedent this isn't a class maybe that you would go for him i think there are other guys like geist like barkley who are a little bit more worthy of it but since we're talking about running back values and this this is a thing that comes up sometimes yes uh, especially with the draft i remember mel kuyper and john gruden got into it last year which not to cut myself off here but i'm gonna miss john gruden so much new coach of the raiders i mean if jack del rio has twitter why couldn't john gruden <laughs> Um, but I'm just saying, like, yeah. the the uh, conflicts that Mel Kuyper Jr. and John Gruden would get into on the actual broadcast, and not to say that I watch ESPN. I, I'm more of an NFL Network guy. Yeah, me too. But Mel Kuyper would drop some some comments like, oh, there's no running back ever that's been worthy of a first-round pick, and then John oh. Gruden cut that down. Mel Kuyper, in my opinion, uh, is – how do I phrase this? He's the Skip Bayless of draft Twitter. That, that's fair. Yeah, I wanted to call him an idiot, but that would have been a little bit rude of me. Because um, he really, he says some ridiculous things. Yeah. I mean, more but, so than you would expect. He and Todd McShay both. Like, McShay's yeah, young. That's, McShay, that's part of the reason why people don't like ESPN. You yeah. can't have so many different personalities that everyone hates. Yeah, I love Stephen A. personally. Yeah, uh, but I know some people can't stand him. I know most people can't stand Skip. I know most. Well, people he's on he's on FS1. Piper. Well, I know he changed, but he used to be. Yeah. That's why yeah. I brought him up. Todd McShay, same deal. I know there are a number of other personalities that people hate. Yeah. Jamel Hill being one. I mean, um, I, I find Jamel interesting. I, I like her personally. I'm not but saying I, me personally. I'm just yeah, saying I, I know people dislike her. People yeah. have. But uh, I th you know it's interesting because I think a lot of the best people are on NFL Network. I think Dan Lebitard, by the way, is the best thing to happen to sports radio. Period, because that show is not sports; it's discussing sports very lightly with athletes having a lot of fun. And I think hey, it's Bobby. a light. <laughs> I think it's a lighter side, though. I think that's oh, something that's sure. definitely valuable. But on the other he, end, you he's have a little bit annoying as well, though. Yeah, not I mean, to say that I I don't like him or I don't hate him, but just I can understand why people wouldn't. Yeah, because I think he he has his moments of being the worst. I, I think Stu Gotts has more of those than he does, but they are a pair, so it, it does make sense that people could feel that way. But Mike Mayock, Daniel Love Jeremiah, Love Charles DJ. Davis, Charles um, Davis is awesome. Yeah, I mean, I used to watch Vikings games because Adrian Peterson's my favorite player. Charles Davis would have cover a lot of those. Yep. Uh, oh fantastic yeah so i mean like they have a lot of really good personalities over there on nfl network um k adams even nate burleson who i'm not like a huge fan of i think he's at least interesting and the I think players i mean I, I i can't get into it because i think they're they have such hot takes as a former player that they yeah. think they have the uh right to say DM i'm not centers. saying if you're a former player that you can't have an opinion but it's i gotta say it's usually not the right one it's yeah usually it's isn't. Yeah, Deion John Sanders Elway is up there. We could talk for days about it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's Bucky bad, Brooks but... is another great one. Yeah, I like Bucky. I think he's made some interesting takes about current players that I don't agree with, but I think for the most part his draft takes are very solid. He that... is a former player that doesn't really count. Yeah. No, I mean, like, he doesn't count as the, the gone like off the, the deep end. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like... You know, have you found that a lot of the people who do the pro uh, or do the scouting stuff for college when it comes to pro evaluation just seem really off? I think you look for different things. 
yeah. at each level. And I, I haven't really found a ton of crossover from people who scout um, yeah. pro town and give their opinions out there. Cause a lot of that is, you know, scouting the other teams that you're going to play if you're in a certain yeah. organization. So you don't really hear a lot of that information get out there. Yeah. Unless like former scout or whatever. But I, I, I guess I was talking more media scouts like Matt Miller and company. Matt but, Miller's good, um, but his NFL, yeah, his NFL takes aren't great. Yeah, uh, that's really that, odd. It, that's it the feel, only one I can think of, though. He I, feels, I just don't know enough other ones. Yeah, I mean, I hear a few, but it, it feels like the way that he talks about the NFL players, it's like he's still stuck in their college mindsets, yeah. which, I mean, it's some of the stuff is really out there. But regardless, we went completely off track. I, don't I, just, I wanted to ask you, this yes. is the whole reason I brought it up, because we were talking about oh, running, yeah, back running backs. Oh, yeah, running backs. Yes, okay. Um... I'm going to ask you two different scenarios. One, with the Browns, and I'm going to ask you for a percentage. And two, I'm going to ask if you were in the Browns organization calling the shots, would you consider taking Saquon Barkley at number one? And what do you think are the odds that you would do it versus if the Browns might, you think the Browns are even considering it? I think they are. Okay. So I have two different perspectives. One, Sashi Brown and company are still in the front office. Okay. I'm, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Let's say they didn't get fired. So they still have the leeway. They still are there. They have passed on quarterbacks in the first two rounds, the past in the first round the past two years. I think that in that situation, they are much more likely to take Saquon Barkley than this fr current front office would at number one. Saquon Barkley is a generational talent. I agree. But I think that the Browns media, I think the media is going to murder them if they don't take a quarterback number one. And I think that's going to be reason enough. He's spent a second round pick on him, and it's his, he's going into his second year. And he's just turning 22 years old, or he just turned 22. He's but, so young. But you know what? It was always going to be a flyer on Kaiser. It was never like, this is the guy. Yeah. It was, let's see if we can get a value pick in the second round. And I'm not he, saying he has the guy potential. Yeah, but I, saying, I, I, I know what you're saying. Let yeah. him develop a little bit. Yeah, honestly... Like, the Browns need a quarterback, but there are other needs where if you bolster it, a worse QB can can play better, like, you know, can develop. And yeah. if you put the pieces around him, that offensive line's going to continue to mesh well, play yeah. better than they did last year. Because they have the talent. Joe Thomas is coming back. Yeah. You can work at the wide receivers. You have Josh Gordon now, who looks like he hasn't even lost a step at all. Yeah. yeah. And, and maybe a healthy Corey Coleman, who I'm not real high on at all. Yeah, but I'm not high on Coleman. Actual, you got a tight end. You got a David Njoku that has such great potential. And Pryor might be coming back. back. Saquon Barkley. Yeah. Just saying, like, that's. Yeah. I mean, pairing him with Duke Johnson will be electric. And from a perspective of, yeah, I would love to see him there. But I feel like Dorsey and company would not consider it one. I think if he's there at four, he is being taken. And I don't think they're going to think twice about that. But I'd if say. Yeah, you already grab your quarterback. Yeah. I'd say there's about a 15% chance that this front office goes Saquon Barkley number one. However. I fully expect them to uh, trade for a quarterback this offseason and then draft one. My belief is that they're going to draft. trade for Alex if, Smith. If you're trading, you're probably going to you're probably going to take Darnold, but I don't I don't want yeah. that. I like the Browns. I want the Browns to be good. I don't like Darnold's so away. If you draft Darnold at number 1 and you are guaranteed to sit him for 2 years, I could live Maybe. with that. Yeah, you can live with it, but I mean that's I, I would prefer Rosen. We're just living with mediocrity. Uh, and mediocrity is a step up for the Browns. That's not even yes. a joke. That's a fact. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I fully believe they're going to trade for Alex Smith this offseason. 100%. What would you give up for Alex Smith to the Browns? It's like, you have you have three second-round picks. I think they're going to have either a second or a third-round pick for Alex Smith. Because Smith has very little value to Kansas City at this point. Yeah, Mahomes looked sharp. I went back yeah. and watched the tape. He looked oh, very good. Yeah. And I, you can just tell it, the, the throws are – Alex Smith couldn't make those in his draft. I love Patrick Mahomes. You remember yeah. our draft boards with quarterback rankings and, and things like that. Yeah. I had Pat Mahomes as my number one. You had Trubisky. Yes, and I had Mahomes number two. Yeah. I mean, Trubisky's not bad. He's just got to put it all together a little bit more. Yeah. And he, 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 needs, he needs help. <laughs> he weapons. Yeah. I mean, he, he ended up performing decently well towards the end of the season. He really had some good games. But it's, 
I love Mahomes. I love him. I thought that he needed a little bit of time to kind of grow into himself, but I thought that his frantic style, his scrambling, the fact that he played in an air raid offense that the air raid turned me off. But when I watched his individual play and I, yeah. I came into the, like, I'm like, I basically tried to take him out of that system, which yeah. I know seems weird. And I'm like, how would he fit into other ones? And you see everything. Yeah. And it, it wasn't even a true air raid. It was a it was almost a hybrid air raid where he was throwing against eight man coverage consistently, fitting passes into tight windows. That's not what the air raid is all about. So this is a guy who had experience unlike someone like a Mason Rudolph, like a Bryce Petty did, like an RG three, throwing into tight windows, plus he had all the tools. With my time of I think evaluating at a high level. Yeah. Uh, which has been, I don't know, maybe four or five years. I think I have never seen an arm like Patrick Mahomes has. I think the only one that can be comparable right now is Josh Allen. And I, I think Josh Allen doesn't show the deep accuracy that Mahomes has. I agree. I, I account that into arm talent. Yeah, when, when you say overall arm talent, I absolutely agree. I think you are absolutely right that there has not been someone like uh, Mahomes in that regard. If we're talking pure arm strength and pass manipulation in the sense of fitting passes into tight windows, throwing across the I mean, I've platform. never seen anyone on the run <laughs> throw absolute darts, dimes like yeah. Pat Mahomes could do. Yeah, and he can throw at 80 yards too. It's, he's what, unbelievable. One of the things that I loved about Mahomes coming into the draft was, especially at the Combine, when he throws deep passes, he shields. He throws it towards the sideline and out in front. He never underthrows it. He never throws it towards the middle of the field. Those are two Worst things thing that are huge. thing you can do on a deep ball is underthrow it. Or throw Worst it towards thing. the middle. Yeah. And um, if you're going deep down the sideline, if yeah. you have overthrow, all right, lost it down. You took a shot. Could have yeah. had a touchdown. It's all right. Which he doesn't miss deep throws often. I mean, it's it's yeah. uncanny. He, he has very good deep accuracy. He needs to get better in the intermediate. Reminds yeah. me a lot now that we're thinking about it. Um, I, I don't like comparisons, but Randall Cunningham had a lot of the same traits. And that Cam, Cam Newton does too. Mm, mind that's you. true. I don't, I think uh, Cam Newton's deep ball isn't as accurate as Mahomes has. He can yet. fit passes in tight windows, but I also yeah. think the fact that his wide receivers are so bad at deep, at deep running routes. I mean, yeah. you see how you see how frequently. Guys like Funches and Kelvin Benjamin ran the wrong route. I mean, I that's love unreal. Funches, but I don't like him as a as a wide receiver. I like him as a tight as end a joker. The, way the Giants use Evan Ingram. So as a joker, that yeah. kind of yeah. I, th I think you're right. He he never felt like a pure wide receiver, but he was too light to be a. Well, I tight had end. him listed as a tight end coming out of Michigan. Yeah, I, I know it, but he was too light to do that. He wasn't yeah. good enough at blocking. He wasn't a bad blocker though. No, was, he just... was great on blocking releases because <laughs> he didn't have to block. Yeah, but he's he seems like he really seemed like a hybrid type who, if he was able to put on weight, would look better. But wasn't it didn't seem like that would make much sense because they wanted to try to ha because he has a skill set of a wide receiver. And yeah, but yeah. you know he's 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 an interesting piece. But like I said, he's not a guy who's really dependable on deep balls. I think Patrick Mahomes to Tyree Kill is that's that's a fun combo. Oh my goodness! And you know who looked really good. Who? I don't know why my voice is doing that. I don't know why I did that. But um, was uh, what's his last name? Albert Wilson. Albert Wilson. He looked real solid too. And yeah. Demarcus Robinson even looked okay. And if he's gonna be your fourth or fifth receiver, that's not bad. Yeah. Uh, spe speaking of the Chiefs, that playoff game. Uh, b before we get to that, we'll just running backs. First round, absolutely would take a transcendent running back. Absolutely, well, I think we're talking about number one overall. First num, round, yeah. I would I would not hesitate to take a running back yeah. if he's the best player available. I think, yeah, I don't know if Mike and I are not on the same page with that one. It depends on how big your needs are. If you're That's a team fair. like the Colts, I'm taking Barkley number one. If you're a team like the Giants, I'd very heavily consider it. If you're a team like the Browns, I would go quarterback first. But you know, it really just depends on if you have a team like the, uh, I guess like the Colts, who they only fell that far because Luck got hurt. So when you I'm have a team, I'm glad the Colts decided not to play him because I heard Andrew yeah. Luck could have came back. Yeah, I'm back. I'm glad that they didn't force him. That that would have been really bad. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we we kind of just jumped all over the place, but yeah, I, mean, I, I we, yeah, there's been no flow here. But so, yeah. I mean, sometimes it's not the worst thing. I mean, this is the off. This is not the off season. But it's the postseason. So this yeah. is just a a time of chatting it up. But let's talk about the playoffs a little bit, shall we? As we've rambled sure. for the first twenty minutes. Let's talk about how sick my guy Tyrod Taylor looked. Oh God. 
Oh god. I don't know, man. I, I still I, I still am a big Tyrod guy. Oh, I am too. But that's I, in my opinion the last time we're going to see him in a Buffalo oh, Bills yeah. uniform. He, he didn't do anything to uh, make the Bills go. Oh yeah, that's our guy. Yeah, I mean he. he Not like did. They, they already knew he wasn't. Yeah, he did suffer a pretty bad concussion though. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. That was his brutal. eyes rolled back into his head when he hit the ground. That was that was ugly. Did you see Miles Jack spear? Oh, didn't he spear in Gakwe? Spear! Didn't didn't he spear in Gakwe? One of the Jaguars sacked uh, Taylor, and then another Jaguar came in and and slammed his teammate <laughs> into the ground and speared him. I, I didn't think see that. I think it was either in Gakwe spear Jack or Jack speared in Gakwe. Either yeah, way, a Twitter video of that. It, it was so funny, but. That was an ugly game. Blake Bortles had more rushing yards than he had passing yards. 86 to 85, right? Yep. Um, he is, I, th- I think I saw the fifth uh, quarterback in the modern era to win a playoff game throwing for less than 100 yards. Tim Tebow was one? Uh, sure. Tim Tebow? No, maybe not. No, I don't think he was. Yeah, I he think... actually had that, he had that long throw to Demarius Thomas. I think he had like that. 300 yards in that game, honestly. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah, I, I'm remembering it wrong. So talk about that for a second. I'm going to pull up the... Uh, Talk about that. Talk about Tim Tebow for a minute. <laughs> no, no, no. Talk talk about the playoff game. I wanna. Um, Jags Bills was gross. It was disgusting. It was honestly boring. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I didn't really have a great time watching that game, uh, other than the fact that I am a big defense guy. Yeah. But I think the defenses weren't even playing particularly well. It was the offenses shooting themselves in the foot and making mistakes uh, that led to the game to be not great. And then in the end, I think the Bills pretty much blew their opportunities. Yeah, uh, it, it sucked with Tyrod going down. I think they had a better chance. I don't think Tyrod would have helped them. I mean, they would have helped them to be in a better spot. They wouldn't yeah. have won with Tyrod Taylor on that final uh, drive. Yeah, they, they they didn't really stand a chance at that point. It was kind of as it was as you over. Saw but... Nathan Peterman going. You're like, all right, well, interception coming. Yeah, but uh, Bortles became the sixth quarterback in the modern era to win a postseason game throwing for le- for 100 or less yards. The others were Mark Sanchez in 2010 against the Chargers. Solid. Joe Flacco against the Patriots in 2010. Elite. He was 4 for 10 passing for 34 yards, no touchdowns, one pick. Elite. Mark Brunel in 2006 over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Stud. Michael Vick in 2005 over the St. Louis Rams. Playmaker. And Steve McNair over the Bills in 2000. I have those, nothing to say regarding that one. Those are the only people to do that. Borles was 12 for 23 mm-hmm. for 87 yards and a touchdown, 3.78 yards per attempt. That's an elite quarterback. I can see why Shad Khan loves him so much. Man, we are going to have a fun time talking about all the offseason BS that's being spread around. But oh yeah, oh yeah. Like I, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about um, the Steelers, which we'll get to a little bit later. But let's uh let's transition to the Titans game because there really isn't much else to say about about that Jags game except the Jaguars' pass defense is unbelievable, and they're I think, solid. You I know think who the she, best player in that pass defense is Jalen Ramsey, Barry Church. Nah, it's Jalen Ramsey. It's Deshaun Gibson actually. Deshaun Gibson was fun. He was a fun player for the Browns. <sighs> no baller with them. Not that that matters, but no. Nah, but he he was a ball hawk back there. I love Deshaun Gibson. Yeah, a little bit, a little slow. Got the size though, and he's got the hands, and he's got the instincts. A lot of a lot of really good talent back there. But um, if Shady was healthy, I think that the Bills might have scored six points instead of three. <laughs> but um, their offense, uh, we'll we'll say stuttered. Without, yeah, uh, I I prefer sputtered. That too. That I too. think that I think that's a better word. Yeah, they never really got going. Yeah. So let's talk it's about that Titans Chiefs game. Uh gee, I got I got roasted for this one, which makes no sense to me as to why. Because I you got it wrong. Said, I don't understand how the Titans would ever be in a position to win this game. They're getting rocked at halftime. It was twenty one to three. And I'm like, yeah, all right. I saw this coming from a mile away. And then the Chiefs in typical Chiefs fashion said, all right, we're not going to adapt to anything that the defense does. We're going to keep doing what we know works, and then it yep. didn't work for the rest of the game. All right, all right but we're going to keep doing it, though. Still doesn't work. Titans come back in some ridiculous fashion. Mariota throws a touchdown to himself. 
the that second is the f- time in NFL history that's ever happened. And of course, John Gruden was calling the game, and his former quarterback Brad Johnson was the guy who did it. So he sent him the video, and it happened twenty it. years ago. <laughs> but it was a uh... yo. Thank you so much, Paul Heyman guy, for the subscription. Hype it up. Yeah, um, so my comments got me. Oh, Bengals already wrong, and people had the misconception also that I had yeah. picked the Rams in that game. I said I was I was inclined to pick them. I was no, but you, you, yeah, you start. you picked you picked the Falcons. I convinced Literally you. Picked the Falcons. Yeah, I convinced you on that. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you were kind of in between. I I, I think I'm not going to take credit fully, but I think I no. pushed you over the edge a little. I would uh-huh. say so. I think, but, other than you, the determining factor for me is that I kept picking against the Falcons all year for no reason, even though I picked them to win the division down south, which didn't happen. Fair enough. Yeah. Was maybe the Falcons let me down so much that I'm like, they're going to keep letting me down. And I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, they're an interesting team because they have so much talent. But let's, so let's take so with... much talent at every position, except for really, I guess, uh, outside linebacker and free safety. Um, no, I think I think even safety, they're pretty. Ricardo good, but... Allen is not good. No, but he's okay. he's at least he's at least surface well. But we were talking about the Titans. right outside linebacker for them. Devondre Campbell, he's actually yeah. not bad. Yeah, I mean, no. they're, they're so good. I mean, Vic Beasley's not came back healthy and they play worse. Yeah, I, personally, I don't like Vic Beasley as an outside backer. I think it's terrible. Well, he's better as a pass rusher, pure pass yeah, rusher. But he ha- but he doesn't do it. Yeah. So, um, regardless, Titans Chiefs game. Um, Kareem Hunt had what five carries in the sec- in the f- in the final three quarters of the game. It, I have no idea. You figure when you're ahead in the playoff game, you probably want to take a little bit off the clock. Yeah, they just they did not do it. Uh, Titans are a bloody mess, just in They're general. They're so bad. They're going to get rocked by your Patriots. Uh, well, we're going to discuss that a little bit later. Fun fact, the last time that the Patriots lost to the Titans was 2003. So <laughs> it's been a little while. Um, but it's – Derrick Henry looked great. However, there's going to be some issues that they're going to have to deal with. They don't have DeMarco Murray, so they don't have their receiving back. They don't have their pass blocker at running back. Derrick Henry let Mariota get lit up by yeah, Derrick Johnson. He, I saw I saw that one hit, and it's like, what is Derrick Henry doing? He was trying to pick up something coming off the left edge, but nothing was. You have responsibility for the inside backer if he's on a read like that. Yeah, absolutely, and he just was late coming over. I mean, that's why you don't see rookies starting um, all three downs. It's just the the fine Not intricacies. Because people are going to say, Derrick Henry, Swami knows is not a rookie, but he accounts for the same thing. Yeah, uh, you know, as his first year kind of starter guy. Yeah, I mean, he obviously is in his second season, but he, yeah. he, uh, th- those young guys. It's why you see guys like Jaquiz Rogers continue to find work because he is one of the best pass blockers at the position. And, and I don't think he's ever rushed for 500 yards in his career. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, he I mean, he was I think he got close. Yeah, this I mean, season actually. I like Jaquiz Rogers. He's not a bad third down back to have, but it's that. That quality pass protection, it's why guys like Kareem Hunt, why guys like Dalvin Cook were so special this year, because they could go out there and they could pass block. Kareem Hunt obviously had some issues at times, but they still trusted him in certain situations when they wanted to give West a breather. So, you know, that's why it's so hard to find that, and if you're missing DeMarco Murray, you're missing a huge function of your third down offense. So that plus, this is still a team that feels more comfortable with a Dory Jackson at wide receiver than their actual wide receivers. Um, he looked Eric, real bad at cornerback this weekend. Yeah, Eric uh, Decker's awful as well this year. Yeah, he's, he dropped a pass right in his mouth pretty much. Uh, he, I think he led the league in drops or was very much up there. He had the, he had the easiest, highest drop rate in the league. But, but you know what Eric Decker has that we don't? is a smoking hot wife on another note. Uh, that is so true. Oh, my God, Jesse James. Not not Jesse James. <laughs> I was like, wow, this <laughs> this this went in a really different direction. Jesse, Jesse James Decker now. Yes. Oh boy. Yeah. Also Jesse Jesse James a hot ass tight end. <laughs> and a good outlaw. Um, yeah, that's true. That's true. But it's uh, Titans are they got lucky that the Chiefs let them back into the game. They took advantage of it, and I really can't say otherwise. The Chiefs are not a good defense. They really haven't been since week one. Um, I mean, Eric Berry transformed that defense, and even he, though you they need help in the secondary, I mean, yeah, Marcus Peters had an interception, which was whatever. They he, need he is so good. Yeah, I mean, Revis is not even half decent. If anymore. you're going out and signing Darrell Revis and starting Darrell Revis, 
in 2018. Yeah, I mean, they, they need that second corner because you can just avoid Marcus Peters. You can just attack their nickel corner. You can attack their other corner. They don't have the safety play without Eric Berry. And while Daniel Sorensen wasn't bad, it was still... He's been decent for them. Undrafted yeah, I, player out of BYU, but he's no Eric yeah, Berry. Yeah, so it's like, it's kind of hard to justify the way that their defense played. They weren't a good run defense. They weren't a good pass defense. And honestly, even with all of that considered, I was still more afraid of them than I was of Jacksonville or Tennessee coming into this round. Just because I feel, or sorry, Jacksonville, Jacksonville, I, Jacksonville, I'm more afraid of. I meant more than Tennessee and Buffalo, because Jacksonville never was going to face New England this round. It, it I'd be excited to see a Jacksonville New England Conference Championship if it comes to that. I would be interested in it, but it would give me a heart attack. I, I don't want to have to see more of Blake Bortles than I have to. Um, <laughs> That's, I mean, you would if you're a Patriots fan, probably. No. The thing is, though, you, I just worry about the Patriots' defense. I don't think they tackle particularly well. Um, and with a guy like Leonard Fournette, who's going to fight for yards, could be tough. Uh, and then, yeah. I mean, not to say that Tom Brady's lost his step. It, that, that's going to be a tough defense to throw on, no exactly. matter what. But Deion Lewis has been superb. Absolutely superb this season. Plus, I personally think that the Patriots are going to sell out on the run if they face Jacksonville. I think it's what the Steelers are going to do this week Miles as well. Miles Jack, I think, has a lot of speed. Would be able to not shut down Deion Lewis, but contain him more than other teams have been able to. If you take an athletic linebacker that's solid in coverage, yeah, that's, but, that's but Lewis, Lewis is one of the more elusive backs in the league, which makes it kind of difficult. You know, yeah. Miles Jack, for all of his gifts, still struggles to wrap yeah. tackle. Oh. Yeah, so, I mean, they don't teach tackling anymore anyway. But it's uh, we're getting a little bit off track again. Let's go to the NFC. Let's talk about the Panthers and Saints game, because I thought that was an excellent game. Um, Christian McCaffrey, best running back on the field. Easily among the four. Yeah. He had a great game. Extremely talented player. Age 21 season. Won't be 22 until June. Maybe they'll actually be a running back eventually. Maybe they'll have a good scheme that he can actually run with now that North Turner. <laughs> How many the... catches did he have this season? A lot. He had Maybe? a lot. Uh, Christian McCaffrey had. It's got to be in the neighborhood. I'd say he had 85. 80. 80 on 113. So, I said the exact number? Yes. Just to be, okay, just so we're on the same page. Fun fact, he averaged 8.1 yards per reception. Decent. Uh, as for a running back, at least. Jarvis Landry? Average, I know, I, I know, eight, I saw eight, that. 8.8. Yeah, that's, uh, Doug Baldwin averaged like 13.1. Yeah, so and it's like people want to talk about Jarius Landry. I'm so sick of it. He's so average. <sighs> yeah, all these yeah, like 113 catches. Yeah, I'm he. Like, uh, I don't care. He, first player in NFL history with over 100 receptions and under a thousand yards. Yeah, that's. Uh, and so that, that is yeah. not on the quarterback. That's on. It's, I mean, not necessarily on Jarvis Landry. He's an elusive player, but. He, he's he's, a, he's a running as back. Valuable as he's, yeah, as he's, he he has the route tree of a running back. Let's let's be honest. Let's not let's not sugarcoat it. He's just not a Screams, good wide drags, receiver. Screams, drags, he's he excels because he, he's just he is very very elusive. Yes, and I think that's I that's like why him. he's a punt returner. Yeah. It's it, it makes sense. He's not fast at all. He's one of the slowest wide receivers in the NFL. He's a four six five guy or so. Yeah, and um, probably. Is, I'm not. Gonna, he's probably dropped off a little bit since he ran that at the combine. Yeah, That's because like you, you train for the combine. Scenario ever. Yeah, so it's like he's not a speed guy. He's elusive. He can make people miss. They like those rub routes. Give him options in space. But he's just on top of that. He's a dirty player too, which pisses me off. Yeah, well, I mean, I think some of his blocks get to be in that dirty conversation. I don't know if he's a dirty player. You saw what he did to Revis? Uh, with the block. It was a block. No, it wasn't. Well, you're talking about when? It was after the play. Revis obviously had wrist surgery in the offseason, and he went over to Revis well after the flag, grabbed him by his arm, and started wrenching his wrist. I didn't see that. that like, he literally bad. went and tried to wrench it. 
repeatedly after the play. No, nothing related to football. Trying to injure him. That's which not was, great. No, it's not not good. That's the type of thing that would make someone lose it on the field and just fight. Yeah, and I mean, if Revis cared about anything more than a paycheck at this point, he probably would have. But I mean, it's just how long ago was that? Was that this season? Yeah, it was week uh, sixteen. Jeez. Yeah, it was it was bad. I'll, I'll send you the video later. But right. um, after that, I think the the Panther Saints game they bottled up Ingram and Kamara very well, but. We finally got to see Drew Brees play like Drew Brees again. First time this season that he actually had a game where it's like, oh my God, Drew Brees is still Drew. You know, he he was airing them out, and it was it was just poetic justice that Ted Ginn, who they let walk, they didn't. He made some nice catches, which he usually yeah. he used to not. So I mean, I'm I not... mean, he was a deep threat. He absolutely was that deep yeah, threat in Carolina. I don't. Yeah. I mean, I value that, but only to an extent. Yeah. So it's like. It was just poetic justice, though, that they let him go and he burned them on a deep touch, yeah. though. But uh, Cam got... I don't know if that was a intentional grounding play or not on Cam at the end of the game, but it's uh, that was a tough way to lose. And Funchess lost in the game. He was open in the end zone and he misplayed the ball. I mean, a, a good wide receiver makes that play. And... Did you watch the end of that game? I watched the entirety of uh, every NFL playoff yeah. game this past weekend. I, w- I just want to make sure because you were kind of giving looks like <laughs> you were trying to recollect or I have no idea. I, I mean, yeah, I try to remember things. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, you know, I haven't seen the play in, you know, a week or so. Yeah. I mean, it was just. I don't, I don't, I don't want to not have the exact memory yeah. in, my, in my head or I don't want to not see the play right in front of me. And then speak on it as if I've just seen it. Because, you know, yeah. after a certain amount of time, there's a stat that the brain can distort memories. Yes. And, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Come I on. mean, I, I can I, I remember that play very vividly. I, there are some plays that I just, I, I do that for each week because I'm, you know, watching so, in, you know, focused, whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, Von Bell was late coming over. He was behind the corner. And he jumped and he didn't plant his foot hard enough. And he just misplayed the ball. It was in the end zone. It would have won them the game. Like 20 seconds left. Misplayed it completely. And they lost. Saints were the better team anyway. I'm glad they to were. see them come out on top. And I don't want to have to watch more of the Panthers offense. I, uh, you know who I do like to watch every single week is Marshawn Lattimore. Marshawn oh. Lattimore is so oh. much fun to watch. He is mwah, magnifique. So he is a top five cornerback in the NFL. He's Chef really, kiss. I, yes. I'm not even saying just after this like, <laughs> I would say just after the season, but week in and week out, it doesn't matter the game. It doesn't yeah. matter like what percent he's at in terms of health in this. It doesn't game. matter. He comes in, he plays amazingly. Yep. He's the defensive rookie of the year. He's the overall rookie of the year, honestly. Yeah, I I, I would vote for him. I think he was phenomenal. For um, White, he he was good. good. He was good. good. Not Marshawn Lattimore. Good. It was not Marshawn Lattimore. Doesn't particularly travel. Marshawn yeah. Lattimore doesn't come in and play the nickel all that much. He plays on the outside. Yep. To be able to go player. out there and... More valuable player. Yep. And track guys, really, really impressive. Um, As a rookie. Yeah. Uh, week really one impressive. to week 17, provided injured for a few of those. Yes. But still. He, he, was, he was excellent. Um, last game before we talk about the Steelers. Rams, Falcons. Jared Goff. This one was an interesting one. Jared Goff was Jared Goff. Yeah. I mean, came down to. Aaron Donald had 11 pressures in the first half. He was disgusted, and he was getting double teamed every play. Yeah. He only every had one in the second play. half. Only one in the second half, but still, 11 in the first half is unreal. The average is like four for I him. Mean, other than Aaron Donald, I mean, really what he, or really that, like, that performance spoke to me. Is I mean Robert Quinn isn't not the same player that he yeah. once was. Hasn't shown it in a while. They have no one else on the defensive line. Robert Quinn is Brockers. not a terrible player anymore. Brockers no, is a Bro- good player. Brockers is solid. No, okay. I'm talking about in terms of generating pressure. Oh yeah, in terms of pressure and and let's be honest, their linebackers suck. Like let's just put that out there. I, Barron is not good. Ogletree is trash. <laughs> trash. 
garbage. Barrett is good situationally. He's not a three down backer. Yeah. And, and, and I'm, I'm, an, I'm an Ogle Tree guy. I know he's not good, but I like I like him. So it's... he's so bad, and he got paid. They actually paid him before good, Aaron good Donald. Him. Good for that. Good for him. Before Aaron, Aaron Donald. Donald. There's no reason for Aaron Donald to ever leave the Rams. Yeah. I like seeing players move teams because it shakes some stuff up a little bit. Yeah, but, like Calais Campbell going to the Jaguars. That was one of those like, oh my yeah. god. I mean, he was older at that time, so I mean, it made more sense. I'm talking about like prime time best players in the league and i oh, yeah. say that calais campbell's not he wasn't when he went to the jaguars he wasn't considered a top pass right he was considered very very good he was he cons- not yeah, considered he- a top two three player yeah. at his position and aaron donald's considered the number one Le'Veon bell considered a number one or two we're gonna talk about the steelers in a bit and whether they retain him Does yeah it, it, i don't know how realistic it seems to me that Le'Veon bell would leave but do they but, want to pay him? Do they want to deal with his off the field stuff potentially? I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll we'll get to them in a second. But um, Todd Gurley looked good. I mean that that man is so special. He is unbelievably special. Unbelievable and, at Georgia. Came back from a torn ACL. And he had a he had a good, not great rookie season. A very had, good rookie season, in my opinion. I mean, I think from a production big run standpoint yes but from a down in down out receiving back you know he had some... oh no he, he's taken such a big step this year in terms yeah. of receiving and route running and things like that and, and even pass blocking a little bit but he's yeah. still just an amazing runner oh yeah so fast so big so strong he has more patience and more vision yeah which is the game has slowed down for him which MVP. is a great thing MVP. <laughs> he, he he doesn't MVP. deserve it but um he needs it I, I would be happy to, for him to get it. Tom Brady, no, you would not be. That's a lie. It's a blatant lie. No, because, no, because I love Todd Gurley. I love. Yeah, him. but you love Tom Brady even more. If Tom well, Brady got down on one knee, says Moonlight Swami, you would you would fucking die. Excuse the language, but you would say, "Oh my God, yes, Tom." Leaves Giselle. Uh, no, the no. Family turn gay. I mean, the money would be nice, but. <laughs> Yeah, you're you're in your own relationship. I swear you'd leave it for Tom Brady. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, I love Todd Gurley, and if there would be a skill position player to get it, I'd be very happy with him getting it. Um, But that's not important. Overall, Falcons, they just played a better game. That defense is so fast. The Jaguars might be the only other team to have that type of elite speed over the middle of the field. Um, that Deion Jones brings and that they have as a whole with their even Keanu Neal who's not the fastest guy in the world still he's makes solid yeah he's, he's still so good he, he plays a good robber he plays a good you know different roles he's a very talented player so that's a team that scares me they have the offensive firepower they have the defensive speed and they have Desmond Trufant this time around and they most likely will be facing either the Saints or the uh, Vikings in the NFC Championship because Nick Foles is terrible but um there's no chance the eagles win and i know eagles fans are like, what, what do you mean what, what, what do you mean there's no chance i know i said that about the titans chiefs really let me down in that department they, i mean that's the chiefs exactly what i thought was going to happen in the first half and then they collapsed in true chiefs fashion in the second yeah. the eagles scored six points no did they even they, Wait, they, no. they they were they were shut out by Dallas. Yeah, they, they were shut out in a game that was so only six points were scored against the Dallas Cowboys defense. Are you kidding me? It was it was bad. It was really bad. The Dallas Cowboys have a bottom five defense in the NFL. You know, it's interesting because it's gonna be really cold in Philly. That's bring a blanket. No, I mean for the Falcons who <laughs> I know. I'm playing a dome. I, I know. I'm just yeah, so, being facetious. I know, I, I get it. But That's going to be an interesting game. I still think the Falcons got it. But before we get to the discussion of the the new playoff round, let's talk a little bit about some coaches. Let's talk about the Steelers real quick. Because here's, you know, everyone was talking about all these articles. The Patriots are going to break up. Belichick's going to retire. He's going to leave. He's going to go coach the Giants instead. Not going to happen. I could see see Patricia. I don't even want Belichick to be the Giants coach. I know that's like... That seems like a ridiculous statement. I do not want that to happen. It is pretty ridiculous. Um, Patricia probably will become the new head coach. I would love Matt Patricia to be the Giants head coach, honestly. I love him. I love him to death. He's he is, so smart. Yeah, and, and dedicated, which is 
Like, he's a guy who will spend 18 hours a day in the facility. And, I mean, he's brilliant. He he is a premier head coaching candidate. And I think, honestly, if Belichick had retired by now, he would be the head coach in New England. Uh, he's not going to make Patricia wait, but he's the real successor. Josh McDaniels is not. I don't really? think... I think as soon as Patricia came into the building, I think... When when McDaniel's left, I think Belichick was like, okay, Maddie is the is the guy, and we'll see what happens over the next few weeks. Whether he where do you think McDaniel's goes? I think he stays. I think the Lions are an option, but I think he stays. Um, I'm I'm indifferent to McDaniel's. I think he's bad situationally. I think he's a smart guy and he knows Brady well and he's a good quarterbacks coach. But my God, his play calling in big situations is just terrible. So. You know, it's, uh, I, I would not be upset if he left. I'd be upset with Patricia leaving, but I think that's going to happen. It's not as bad as dialing up a slant on the goal line when you have Marshawn Lynch. I mean, that wasn't even a bad play call. Marsha, no one could stop Marshawn Lynch on the goal line the entire season. He was wide open on the backside of the play. Bad play call. And actually, Marshawn Lynch. I can't believe you're defending that call. Marshawn Lynch was stopped. at. He was one of the worst short yardage backs in the NFL. So, I cannot believe you are defending that call. I'm not defending the throw. I'm fine with the play call. The throw was late, and it was too it was too far inside. Both of those are why it failed. But regardless, poor call. Poor call. Pittsburgh Steelers. While the, all the talk is about the Patriots breaking apart, the team, in my opinion, that we need to be watching for this offseason is going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers. Le'Veon Bell has threatened as of today, that no. if he is franchise tagged, he will potentially retire or will hold out the entire 2018 he season. He's like, he's, he, will, he will not retire. He said he will either retire or hold out the entire 2018 season if he is franchise tagged. Ben Roethlisberger, last season, heavily discussed retiring, stuck around, but this really could be the end for him. Mm. Pair those two together, this Steelers team has a lot higher chance of falling apart than any other of the major contenders as of right now, in my opinion. What do you think? And I don't think he's going to retire, uh, Le'Veon. I think that's ridiculous. What do you think uh, are the chances Le'Veon Bell plays in a Pittsburgh Steelers uniform next season? What do you think are the odds that he plays in a different uniform next season? Because the odds may not be the same. That's a good question. I'm going to say 65% he's in a Pittsburgh Steelers uniform and 40% that he is in a different uniform. I think that they're going to extend him long term with a lot of outs. The reason the numbers don't match on that, guys, is because there's a, like he could hold out and yeah. still be in the Steelers but not play on a different team. Yeah. In case you're yeah, so I would say that... That is probably why. I think that I think he'll probably be extended, but I can understand that he Le'Veon might. Le'Veon Bell not. could get a max running back deal, like the highest deal we've seen uh, from many teams in the league. Oh yeah. So, um, I mean, he's saying the Steelers where you don't like the management and you're not going to have Big Ben there. Solid offensive line there. Yeah. That's what you do have right now. Uh, How long does that last? Highest paid running back per year is Le'Veon at 12 mil. The next yeah. best is eight. Who's getting eight? Freeman and LaShawn eight. McCoy. LaShawn makes sense. Devontae Freeman's getting that much? Eight, 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 two, five. He's getting 41 over uh, the next five years, I think. He's not even worth that to the Falcons, as good as I think he is with Tevin Coleman in there. And I know I they really heavily rely on a, uh, yeah. a dual back setup. But, yeah. I mean, you're not going to pay someone who's going to split carries eight and a half per year nearly. Yeah. And Doug Martin, by the way, is getting paid 7.1 per year through 2021. That's fun. That, that's pretty bad. Can you um, imagine being a poor organization as the Bucks? No, I can't. Taking Roberto Aguayo. Roberto Aguayo. Trading up in round two. No, I can't. Oh, um, my God. It, it, it's, it's bad. But regardless, <laughs> I think Le'Veon. Signing could... Dirk Cutter. I think Le'Veon could get paid 13, 14 million a year. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you had... Okay, so let's say you're the Steelers. 
what is your price range for Le'Veon Bell, knowing that Ben Roethlisberger might be retiring? Uh, thirteen to fourteen. Then figured you could you could up that a little bit. You're would you pay Big Ben's salary if he retires? Would you consider tagging and trading Le'Veon? Uh, I sure definitely consider it. If I'm the Steelers, yeah. I would trade Le'Veon Bell because yeah, they would the have organization, to, you know. whether you want to admit it or not, is old. There are pieces there. If Big Ben retires, what do you have? I mean, Landry Jones looked good against the Browns. He's a bad quarterback, Landry Jones. Yeah, he's not good. Their offensive line is solid, but the, old. Their wide receiving Pounce, core is good. Pouncey's older. Yep. Gilbert is older. Villanueva he's, is he's not getting young. older. He's huh? not young. I think he's 29. I would say in that range. Yeah. Um, Ramon Foster certainly is no young spring chicken. Yes. Who am I missing here? Uh, David DeCastro, super yes. good. Yeah, really, he's, I, he's excellent. Can I almost forget the best player on that defensive line? Offensive, or offensive line. line, excuse me. Um, so he's like he's young-ish, and he's arguably the best right guard in the league. But other than that, you're in a bad spot in two, three years on that O line. Yeah. Antonio Brown's great, but he's what twenty nine. Yeah, he's not. He's not young. Who else do you have? I mean, you're in a weird situation um, with the freak that is Martavis Bryant. He's really good, but how many games does he play a season if he keeps getting suspended? Juju is the guy, honestly. Juju's a beast. Juju Smith-Schuster? He's the future for them. Who else uh, do they have? Uh, um, I don't think they Eli Rogers. Anymore. Yeah. Uh, and then Jesse James is not a formidable tight end. I mean, he's okay, but... And he's not formidable. Yeah, so, I mean, it's just... It's an offense that has nobody. Why yeah. would you re- Why would you sign back if you're Le'Veon Bell? And why, if you're the Steelers, are you going to pay to have a running back that's going to be the bell cow beast on a team that can huh. The bell cow. It's a phrase. The Le'Veon bell cow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happy accident. Yes, yeah, so um, I think that's kind of the... The gist of it. I'd, I'd, okay. Over, under, the, these two things happening. What percentage? Roethlisberger retires. Bell is gone n- next year. Both of those things happening percentage-wise? Or, or individually? We'll do, we'll do both. Okay. Um, I think, you know, I don't want to work out actual percentages as to what they would be, so I'm just going to throw numbers out there. Okay. Um, percentage, Big Ben is not with the Steelers next year. 70 percent i think that's high i think it's super high but if you thought about retiring last year and let's say the Steelers win a championship if you go out on top 70s high i'm gonna say 40 actually i'm gonna change 70s high okay um i'm gonna say percentage lady on bell is not on the team next year i'm gonna say 30 okay so both happening i'm gonna say like 15 okay i'm gonna say ben 55 percent he's gone bell i'm sticking with about 40 percent or what i say 35 percent that he's on a different team somewhere in there somewhere, somewhere in that range I, I think that's it i'd say maybe a 25 percent that both are gone i think it's unlikely but i wouldn't be surprised if it happened because there's been so much speculation about it that's true but speculation doesn't always lead to things happening yeah. as we know all too well let's talk quickly about the hirings we'll, we'll just rapid fire them um hirings firings indifference uh mike malarkey staying in tennessee weak terrible um matt Nagy, new head coach in don't Chicago. know too much about him can't comment i'm interested he kept vic fangio he kept his special teams coordinator he brought in a good offensive mind i like it i think he could be a pretty good uh head coach for them we'll see what he does and he's also from the andy reed line mike um, petten mike petten gets a lot of credit for what the jets did with rex ryan's defense um, the only numbers i saw of him though were like every year so he has top 10 defense but I, you look at the years where he was with different teams it was like we started off at number one and they got worse every year like yeah. uh, maybe he just can't adapt maybe it's just coincidence i'm not sure yeah like in in new york by the way rex ryan for the first year and a half basically called most of the plays I he did that. open things up a little bit but it was really that they were just calling his plays off the play sheet mm-hmm. so rex was really in control for most of the years in new york Petten was good in buffalo 
but they had acquired Jerry Hughes and they had 57 sacks that season, and then they became an even better defense the year that he left. Cleveland had a very good pass defense in 2014. They were putrid in 2015. So Penton doesn't have a great track record, but he was around some really good defenses. He was the linebackers coach with the Ravens from, I think it was like 2004 to 2008, somewhere in there. Those are some talented linebackers. Yeah, so I mean, he he was around some really great players. I don't know if he's going to be any good with the Packers, but he absolutely has to be better than Don Capers. Um, so bad. <laughs> Joe Philbin. Offensive coordinator for the Packers. Weird. Um, I think he's a little underrated as a coach. I think with the Dolphins, he just wasn't prepared to go into the situation that he was dealt. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I, would they have hard knocks or something? I don't I know. Mean, they have the they have the Richie Incognito thing, which was. I, which I feel was like bad. I saw something on. I feel like I saw Joe Philbin on Hard Knocks with the Dolphins. I feel like that was a yeah. thing. I might be it, mistaken. It, it might have been. Um, but, but I mean, I don't know. He's been okay. I don't he, know how he's going to perform. He is Aaron Rodgers. I'm not sure what you have to do. He used to be the offensive coordinator in Green Bay with mm-hmm. Rodgers. So at least there's some familiarity there. Um, yeah, it's Aaron Rodgers. So. Yeah. Um, anyone else off the top of our heads that – I don't think so. I don't think anything real notable other than I guess Gruden. there's speculation with different guys going different places. How about Gruden? We talked about uh, that. That's at, a we, big one. We haven't talked about that ever really. We did. Well, I know we speculated that it could be happening. We no, we, we, we speculated it that it was happening. Yeah. And we were speculating the pieces. Um, apparently, Jim O'Neill is the guy who's being recruited to be the defensive coordinator. And he was awful in Cleveland and in San Francisco. I mean, just terrible. Um, so I don't know how to feel about that. But apparently, they violated the Rooney rule. Oh, yeah? Which... With the, uh, like, races? Yeah. I mean? Not, uh not uh, interviewing minorities, a, a minority candidate, which could be a huge deal. Huge deal. Yeah. Um, they could get penalized pretty badly for that. We'll see what exactly happens. But um, that that's really it. I think, I think he's going to be a good hire. I was uh, watching the press conference, and Gruden, I, I forget who he said it, but he, they said they had already finalized with a special teams coordinator. And I want to say defense. Yeah, no, they were talking about O'Neal. Um, I don't remember. I who hadn't they... heard anything about. Oh, him. Zampezi, I think was the. Yeah, Rich Zampezi. Yeah, I think I thought that's who they got. I don't remember exactly, but oh, uh... yeah, Paul Gunther is the defensive coordinator. Yeah, Paul um, Gunther. It's an interesting group. I expected him to bring in some larger names, I guess, but he brought in solid guys. Yeah, I mean, we'll see exactly what happens, but he should absolutely help Derek Carr out. I mean, that's... Yeah, he's the quarterback guru. That's his thing. Yeah, I mean, look what he did with uh, all those guys yeah. he drafted. Um, he, we went over his draft list. I know. And it was, there was no one really taken high. I know. I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. I love I'm... Bruden. All right, you watch your mouth. <laughs> Let's talk about the, uh, the games for this weekend. Uh, we have Patriots at uh, versus Titans. We'll start with that. Um, keys um, to the game. So we're we're with the predictions period. Yeah. Uh, we'll see the channel. What's going on, guys? Hey. hey whoa. Um. <laughs> again, talked about it last week. But there is no scenario <laughs> where the Titans win this game. I don't care. I don't care that I'm sleeping on the Titans. The Titans are not good. Remember the Titans. Win. I've never seen that movie. Yeah, you're 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 BSing right now. I'm actually, I'm dead serious. I've never seen it. I have I, watched that movie so many times. Okay, so you have to do homework now. I'm getting Skype for the next one. You have to watch Remember the Titans and talk about it next episode. People have been telling me to do it for a while. I haven't gotten to it. I don't see it happening. You have to. Um, if I if, if I'm getting Skype, fantastic movie. I really don't have any reason not to, other than like staying with the uh, the theme of not like not look. Seeing. Look, look, I never watched Draft Day, okay? That's not a must-watch movie. I no. was a big fan, personally. No, but... Who are you, you picking? You have to watch Remember the Titans. Fonte and Mac is... You, you have to watch Remember the Titans this week, and I will get Skype, so you can have better quality you for your videos. You were supposed to have Skype for this one. You know what? What, you know what, what? is happening here is maybe I won't watch it this week, and maybe next week we'll talk about it. This is bargaining right here. 
I will, go, if you promise to watch it, I will go and download Skype immediately after this show. Mm, I can't make any promises. Okay, then I can't either. Involved. Well, we, uh, <laughs> we were, we already agreed, regardless. Okay. In, is, in principle, but there, there was no contract. This is, so, a, this is predictions. This is yes. enough remembering the Titans talk. Um, Patriots have the win. Their defense, I don't care how bad it is. The Titans offense is worse. There's no DeMarco Murray. So you take away the blocking aspect. You take away the receiving out of the backfield aspect, um, which matters a lot, especially with a quarterback like Marcus Mariota, who isn't yeah. refined yet. He's coming into a situation where he's got to walk into New England. I don't see them winning the game. Oh, no. I don't think they're going to win Any circumstance. It. I don't even oh. think it's going to – I think it might be closer than I'd expect, but they're not going to win. I'm going to say 31-13. to 13. Okay. I'm going to say it's going to be – uh, 34 to 10. I, I think that they're going to have some turnovers. I think they're going to stall a little bit. I think Henry's going to run for a good amount of yardage, but it's not going to be important yardage. Um, I think James Harrison's going to play, not a spy, but he's going to set the edge and kind of try to contain Mariota. Does which he is, have the speed to do that? I don't know. I think he does. Mariota's, not, Mariota's great straight line speed, but he's not the most elusive or creative runner. So I think that's... Uh, that's something. But I also don't think that the Titans have anywhere near the defense to handle the Patriots. So uh, th- I think Kevin Byard picks off Tom Brady. <sighs> is, I is think it go- he takes a shot deep for Cooks. Okay. And it's a little bit underthrown. Byard cuts in front. Okay. Right. I, I was going to say, is it a Third miscommunication? with 7.42 to go. I'd say it's going to be – I'd say he's going to throw a pick and it's going to be in the second quarter with three and a half to go because Brady, when it comes to the playoffs, really just he, – he makes some really stupid decisions before halftime. It's it's bad. Um, keep, keep in mind about seven minutes and 50 seconds to go in the third quarter. In eight seconds, there's going to be an intercepted ball by Kevin Byard looking for Brandon Cooks deep down the seam. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. But uh, I'm picking the uh, the Patriots 34-10. to 10. All right, so uh, very similar scoreline there. We've yeah. been pretty much consistent with our picks. Uh, me, like, me and the same. Yeah, um, uh, Jaguar Steelers. This is a fun one. I haven't decided exactly where I'm going here. I'm going to say Pittsburgh makes a lot of sense at home. I really want to see Jacksonville win. Yeah. And I know Steelers are going to oh, I'm back. No. I like the Jaguars a lot. I've liked them since they've been terrible. Um, Giants couldn't give it to me. Give me a Jaguars win. I want to see the Jaguars play. I want to see Robbie Bortles win a Super Bowl. Robbie Bortles! Um, the Jaguars... I love the defense. The Jaguars did trounce the Steelers in Pittsburgh last time. They did. Um, I don't think that was a fair uh, assessment of how good both teams are. Yeah. I think it made the Jaguars look way better, and it made the Steelers look way worse yeah big ben playoff time no messing around i just don't think that they can really handle how good this defense is of the jacksonville jaguars Le'Veon bell is going to be able to run for some good yardage he'll be able to catch some balls in the backfield do well in that regard but if they go down early and have to pass the ball uh deep down the field or throw the ball big ben's not gonna have the time he's gonna have to force a throw into arguably the best secondary in the nfl and that's yep. not a good thing. What What's your prediction score? I'm going to say, I mean, both teams can still put points on the board more so than the team like the Titans. Even with the solid defense from the Jaguars, I'm going to say the Steelers still managed to score at least 17. I'm going nice. to say 17 from the Steelers. I'm going to say the Jags put up uh, – 24. It's a closer game wow. only because the Jaguars' defense is, or offense isn't very good. Okay. Um, I am picking the Steelers. A couple yeah, reasons. Makes sense. A couple reasons. One, the. <sighs> okay. It's going to be 17 degrees in that game. Jaguars do not play well in the cold. Leonard Fournette does not play well in the cold. Blake Bortles is a bad enough quarterback in perfect temperatures and conditions. Compare that with Bobby wide Bortles receivers who drops. Play when it matters and wins under any condition. Pair that with guys who have kind of drop issues. Even Keelan Cole has had drop issues. He doesn't. He's the worst receiver on that team. 
and he's and people are still saying there are actually people who tried to justify that you don't take a first uh, a wide receiver in the first round because Keelan Cole put up 44 receptions this year. He's a solid number four, and you have Allen yeah. Robinson, you have Allen Hearns, you have Marquise D. Westbrook, Lee. you have Marquise Lee. He's a solid have, five. <laughs> I'm not going to name Rashad Green in that mix, but Rashad yeah. Green's not terrible. Yeah. So um, I do think that not having Shazier will hurt them, but I still am feeling very confident in the fact that this is a Steelers team that um, I think they're better. I think Antonio Brown's going to play. I think they're going to run the ball a lot more. I think they're going to be a lot more effective of it. And if it comes down to kicking, I trust Chris Boswell in Pittsburgh a lot more than, uh, what was it, Josh Lambeau? He's the kicker for the Jaguars. Josh Scobie still? I don't no, know. I, I, think, four years I, think, I think it is Lambeau. Yeah, it might um, be. I actually but don't know. This is a Steelers team that is top 10 in points allowed, top 10 in points scored, top ten, top 5 in yards allowed, top 5 in uh, yards, or yards gained and allowed. Um, this is a really, really good team in the Steelers. And I think Antonio that, Brown will be a non factor because Jalen Ramsey will take him off. I don't I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't believe it. But uh, I I don't make I'm making stretches here only really for the point of riling up people in my comment section. I'm gonna pick Steelers twenty four, Jaguars uh thirteen. Very similar score line, but in another direction. So so far yeah. we have split two. I yeah. have the Jags, you're the Steelers. We both have, have the Patriots team we talked about last the Patriots yeah okay uh Falcons Eagles in Philadelphia it, I don't care it, it could be anywhere the Falcons yeah Patri- um, Japan, it's not the Eagles Nick Foles no it's not good enough this is a team yeah. that scored zero on the putrid Dallas Cowboys defense yeah this is not zero. a this don't is not a this is not a team that I feel comfortable picking I'm picking the Falcons uh I don't know if it'll be a high-scoring game. I'd say it's probably going to be. I think the Falcons can put up points. I'm going to say, I'm going to say they score 38. Wow. I know, quite a few. I'm going to say the Eagles put up nine. Three I'm going to say, I'm going to say 30 to 14. Falcons. Two win. touchdowns, really. Two touchdowns. I think one's going to come in garbage time. Who who gets it for? Uh, how does it happen? Ertz. Hurts up the seam. That's one of them. Where's the other Th- one? That'll be the garbage time one. Other one's going to be a Jai. Jai is sick. I think he's going to break off a 20 yard run and put them over the top. No After... breakaway speed. I think that would be tough with the Falcons defense having so much speed. Yeah, I, I, we'll see. You know, just bad angles or something. They're not the most disciplined team. But we'll see. Last one Saints, Vikings. Uh, this, is a, this is the game of the week for me. Yes. Oh man, this is so tough. I I think it's the Vikings year though. I do. I think the Vikings are a little bit better overall. Things have been clicking on offense despite not really having all the pieces together. I know they have they have solid pieces, but even as well as Case Keenum is playing, you can't tell me Case Keenum is a is a stud QB. You can't. I know no, he's he, playing really well. Yeah, playing with they're, confidence. They are without pieces. Vikings fans can use this as an argument as to how the Vikings are doing way better. Look at what they're doing with less whatever. Best um, defense in football. Have solid receiver. Their defense is so good. Definitely uh, top three in the NFL. Best in football. Not the best. Um, great pass rush. Really good run defense. Solid secondary. They don't allow yards or points. Um, they don't allow conversions either. I feel like Drew Brees is going to perform well. Still in a dome. Um, so you really don't have to worry about it. But I think it's going to be... A really, really fun and interesting game. I, I'm going to say the Vikings narrowly edge it out. I think that too many young guys on the Saints won't be able to. Uh, it's not about them performing, but they don't have the experience. You know, you look at Von Bell, you look at Marcus Williams, you look at Marshawn Lattimore, you look at Ken Crawley all starting in the secondary. I know it's the playoffs. I know it really doesn't matter, but I got to have a reason. Okay, all right. Yeah. I can't just feel it in my heart that the Vikings are going to win. I'm yeah. going to say the Vikings score um, 27 to the saints 24 i think it's going to come down to a final drive from the saints and i'm going to say they just don't manage it somehow whether it's just rubri's mistake like he made at the end of one of those atlanta games yep um, i'm not sure i just don't think that they're going to be able to win in minnesota i'm going to pick the vikings 27 21 over the saints i think this is going to be a nail biter to the finish but i think that Drew Brees is going to have two interceptions 
I don't think that they're going to be a very effective offense, and I think that they're going to end up with some good points come, you know, maybe through a defensive touchdown, maybe through a return touchdown from Kamara, something. I think they'll be able to put up some points, but I do think that the Vikings are going to pretty much secure this game. Better defense, better offense. I think the wide receiving wide receiver play for the Vikings is better than the Saints. I love Michael Thomas, but I don't trust their number he's, two. It's not Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen combo, though. No, he, he can't be both of them. He yeah. can be one, he can't be both. Um, Harrison Smith is going to be the, the player of the game in this one. Um, expect nice. him to play a lot on the edge. Amazing all season. Uh, expect him to be erase. a linebacker. Yeah, in uh, the box. Yeah, expect him to try to erase Alvin Kamara. This is the best third third down defense in NFL history, from what I read. It was like twenty five percent allowed, which is just absurd. Um, best defense in football, at home. I'm picking the Vikings twenty seven twenty one. Do you know about profit bets? Um, I know of them. I don't know any. All right, let's give you one here. Uh, it's okay. not really. I mean, it kind of is, but, I mean, it's not like will there be more than 350 yards or whatever. It's not like, you know, I'm not going to talk about it. Pick six in this game. Yes or no, who gets it if yes? I know that the pick six, that's a weird thing. Pick six in the flat. I'm going to go Terrence Newman. I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to go uh, Rhodes closed. Xavier Rhodes, pick six machine. Very Fair good enough. at doing it. I say he gets one. Okay. Uh, give me another one. Give you another pick six? No, get, no give me another. Another uh, prop bet? Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to say, uh, um, oh man, I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to think of what some might be for the game. We'll say not, not a prop bet necessarily, but we'll give you another kind of yarded situation. Okay. Um, we'll say does – Alvin Kamara have fewer yards than the rest of every running back or more yards than every other running back combined in the game. So Mark Ingram, so whoever not a chance throw out there, whether it's Jarek McKinnon or um, Latavius Murray. Yeah. Whoever they I, throw out there. Doesn't I, I'd, have more. I, I'd say no, not a chance. What about total? If you include kick return yards, yeah. I don't. Then Receiving no. rushing. No. I'm going to say yes. Okay. Uh, Jacksonville Steelers. Over under four and a half sacks for the Jaguars. For the Jaguars. Um, uh, under. under. I think four is four is a good number. You got pressure from guys like Yannick Ngakwe, Dante Fowler, Calais Campbell, obviously. Malik Great Jackson. Great interior pass rush with Malik Jackson and Marcel Darius. But five sacks is a lot to ask. Of a it defense, is. especially with a solid offensive line like the Steelers, no way. Uh, last one. Let's do one from the Tennessee Titans Patriots game. How uh, many re- How many receiving touchdowns does Marcus Mariota throw to himself? Over under point five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, over. Uh, no, but uh, what is going to happen? More catches for a Dory Jackson, or more touchdowns for Rob Gronkowski? Ooh, that's a that's a fun one. I'm gonna say. Oh, that one's tough. I'm gonna say, you know what? You have to say Dory Jackson based on uh, what the Titans have shown in the past couple of games. And I know Gronk might go out there and have one or two touchdowns even, but I yeah. think Dory Jackson's gonna catch a few balls. Let's see how many receptions he has. Uh, he has one target. I think I think he's gonna catch a few balls. Okay, I think they'll have to try to do something to salvage their season. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, one more. Let's do one from the uh, from the Falcons Eagles game. Let's, Let's see. see. Over under thirty five and a half yards for longest play of the game. Over. Um, yeah, about from a running back though over i think Devontae friend is going to bust off a run um okay this is another one let's try this what is more likely total interceptions thrown in the falcons eagles game or matt bryant field goals i think you figure they're going to be um probably about three interceptions 
total in that game. Yeah. I would say two from Foles, one from Ryan. If that, uh, I would say Matt Bryant. Oh. I have a feeling they could walk down the field multiple times but get stalled. Yeah, I'm going to say uh, Matt Bryant field goals is going to be more. Okay. So four field goals and three interceptions. Is that what you're About, looking at? Yeah. Okay. I think we're good unless you have any more that you want to toss out there. I think that was, that was a fun thing. We should maybe do that more often, but come prepared next time. Because you put me on the spot, and I was like... You you I brought thought, up prop bets. I didn't put you on the spot. I you brought, put brought yourself. up one, and then you're like, let's think of more. And I'm like, what? Yeah, well, that's fun. No, that, yeah. Im- improvisational like, feel. I agree. I, I've never done improv. All this is scripted, as you know. We read the entire segment off a of script. Yes, I mean... So even when we go off on tangents, those are written in. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I have my whole script right here on my monitor. This is actually on the script right now. Yes. I was talking right, about the script. Yes. It's scrolling right in front of my eyes. That's why I'm always looking away from the camera. Yeah, we have, <laughs> we have each teleprompters installed. They're very expensive. But yes, very, very expensive, but we, we use the profits from this show to, uh, to pay for it. So much. I hope you guys enjoyed. This was the Cover 2 Podcast, episode number seven. Next week will be even better. This is uh, this has been a great start. This is, what, so seven episodes in, almost two months worth of content. I personally have had a blast every week. Um, I hope you guys are as well. If you want to check it out, it's over on Bengals channel, usually in the day after or so. Um, we also are on SoundCloud, and we are also on iTunes. If you look up the Cover 2 Podcast. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm Malad Swami for Bengal, the Bengal Giants fan, and I'll be talking to you guys tomorrow or next week. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Get it together! Face!